What was the amount they asked in Paris Accord or even AOC's uh, uh, proposal? I think AOC's was $30 trillion. Yeah, it's probably Paris, trillion. Accord, Paris Accord was around, what, $100 trillion? The, the number is a big number. That they're, they're like ridiculously yeah. large numbers. And, yeah. But you did a video and you said the fact that the improvement – you know, it would only improve the temperature by what 0. 0.3 degrees. I think that that was the number that you said in in a uh, in an article with the Paris Accord, 100 trillion dollars. If you're saying there's more efficient ways to fix this, you'll see reports and they'll say, "Well, here's what we got: capacity factor by energy source in 2020. You got nuclear options, geothermal, natural gas, hydropower, coal, wind, solar. What is the most efficient way for us to be able to?" Catalytic converter, mm. 200 bucks you were talking yeah. about, right? That's kind of what fixed LA. Yes. What are some of the things we individually could do, and what are some of the things the government can do to help with this? So I'm going to disappoint you right off the bat and say this is not a problem that individuals can fix. Uh, we, we, you know, People love to talk about, oh, you should take your car a little less, you should eat a little less. So meat, paper straws are not going to fix climate change? <laughs> no. So it, it, these are all good things. And, Terrible. You know, Damn. Please you know, feel free to do them, and they're yeah. probably good for other things. But don't believe that this is a question about us you know, doing a little less and then we've fixed it. The main issue here is that there is about – you know, somewhere between four and six billion people out there, the non-rich people in this world, who want to be rich. That's China, India, Africa. And they want to get out of poverty. And uh, you can't blame them. They will want to do that by, by producing much more, by becoming rich, just like we are. And that will emit a lot more CO2 unless we have a different technology to take over. And that gets back to the whole point of the catalytic converter. Instead of making this about us feeling guilty right now and we got to cut in the next three years, which will be fantastically costly, lead to a lot of uh, uh, voters saying no. Uh, you know, that's w if you remember back in France in 2018, you had the yellow vests that were basically revolting because mm -hmm. they said, I don't want to pay more for my gas. <laughs> and you will get these sorts of protests once people start seeing the incredible price hikes that those kinds of policies uh, will lead to. You will not be able to do it. And even if you do, you will only be able to do that for the rich countries, which is a small fraction of the total emissions. This is about finding a way that the world can both become richer and better off in so many other ways and also cut its emissions. That's not easy. So people, you know, they, the, the people can, then, can do nothing about it on a day-to-day -day basis. So keep driving your gas cars, keep smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Matter of fact, double down on cigarettes, cigars, smoke out. Now you're slightly skewing my point. But yes, uh, look. Uh, this is not predominantly about what each one of us do. This because is the only reason I ask this question is because mm. you'll hear the argument. I'm obviously being you know, a little bit uh, sarcastic here. But what I'm saying is it's the blame is on the people. You know, here's who it is. We caused this. This is because of us. And it is catastrophic. If we don't fix it, you know, it's going to be the end of the world. And what about yeah. you and other? Okay, so yeah. tell me and, do something about and, it. And I think this is the main point. If you think this is the end of the world, and a lot of people have been led to believe that it's the end of the world, uh, certainly the media uh, uh, sort of narrative, yeah. uh, uh, a, a recent OECD survey showed that all the rich countries, uh, about 60% of all people now believe that global warming is likely or very likely to lead to the extinction of mankind. And that's just, you know, that's crazy. That's not at all what the UN is telling us in its 4,000 page long report. This is not the story. It's the media uh, story. So if you think global warming is this meteor hurtling towards Earth, mm -hmm. that's all you should be concerned about. That's the AOC point. You know, if we have 12 years left, and I get why she thinks that. I get why Greta Thunberg thinks. It, you know, you've, they've heard constantly and over again on the media, this is the end of the world. If that's true, this should be our only concern. That's absolutely correct. But it's not. That's not actually what global warming is. Global warming is a problem, not the end of the world, and it's one that we can fix very poorly right now, but that we can fix fairly effectively over a longer term, and that is through innovation. So again, you know, if we could come up with the equivalent of the catalytic converter for climate change, we could fix it. Can this. you give us some more examples of catalytic converters? <laughs> yes. like, and I'm being serious. Like, What yeah. are some things we've done the entre uh, whether it's entrepreneurs, military, whether it's whoever it is, yes. what are some things we've done? So 
if if I had the full example, we would already have solved it, and I'd be a very rich man. So I'm going to give you examples, but they're not. Well, I want be, you yes. to be rich, Reggie yeah. Calvin. Oh, I want to be rich, much. and I want you to be so, rich. So, uh, uh, fourth generation nuclear, basically, prom it's a new technology. So we're third generation right now. Mm -hmm. It promises to be incredibly safe and incredibly cheap. Now, remember. That was what they said about the other three generations. So, you know, I'm a little skeptical, but let's see. It, th there's a lot of good arguments. It seems reasonable. If that's true, we could basically have incredibly cheap electricity in the future that would be entirely CO2 free. How cool would that be? So that's one very obvious solution. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, electricity is only about 20% of our emissions. We can make it more, but it's still not a solution for most of the emissions, but it'd be a fantastic start. So that's one. Craig Venter, the guy who cracked the human genome back in 2000, mm -hmm. you may remember him. He's, uh, he has some crazy ideas and some of them are f fun crazy. So one of them is that he has this plan to uh, take genetically modified algae, put them out on the ocean surface and let them grow. There they will suck up sunlight and CO2 and create oil. We could basically uh, grow our own Saudi Arabias out on the ocean surface. Then we'd harvest them. We could keep our entire fossil fuel infrastructure. And remember, because the oil has just been grown out on the ocean surface, you know, half a year ago, it would be CO2 neutral. Now, the, the important point to remember is this does not work yet. It sort of works in a laboratory. But Is this what <clears throat> yes, that's genetic what we, yeah. 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 exon claim algae biofuel breakthrough. We're still not much closer to yes. commercialized algae biofuels. Yes. But, but the, so the, the, the point here again is I'm not advocating for this. I'm saying this is one of many, many ideas. Those are the kinds of things that could power humanity in the rest of the 21st century. So the point is not to come up and say, oh, this is the one that's going to be the winner. There are tons of these ideas out there. We just need one of them to work. Well, so my, my point is we should be investing a lot more in those researchers because research is cheap. And imagine if we could come up with one. Imagine if this Craig Venter uh, uh, innovation actually could become true. Everyone would buy it, not just rich, well-meaning Americans, but also the Chinese, the Indians, and the Africans. So the whole point here is to say, this is just like we did with the catalytic converter. We're going to solve this with technology, not by moral exhortations. Is that the word? You know, thou shall not. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.